I met Jeff Bezos relatively early in Amazon's history. One of the companies that my firm owned had helped him by providing a bibliography of books in print. I didn't think the deal we'd gotten was so good, so I went out there to see whether I could change the deal and actually get some stock in his company. He said, well, he didn't need us as much now as he did a year or so before, but because we were helpful, he did decide to give us some stock in his company. We actually didn't have that much faith in the company, so when he took the company public, we sold our stock. That was our biggest investment mistake. That stock today is worth five or six billion dollars. I wish I'd held on. You have become the wealthiest man in the world. It, is that a title that you really wanted or not? I, is it I a can burden? assure you I have never sought that title. I would much rather if they said like, um, you know, inventor Jeff Bezos or entrepreneur Jeff Bezos or, uh, you know, father Jeff Bezos. Those kinds of things are much more meaningful to me. And uh, the, you know, the, it's an output measure. The, if you look at the financial success of Amazon and the, the stock, I own 16% of Amazon. Um, Amazon's worth roughly a trillion dollars. That means that what we have built over 20 years, we have built $840 billion of wealth for other people. And that's great. That's how it should be. You know, there, I believe so powerfully in uh, the ability of entrepreneurial capitalism and free markets to solve so many of the world's problems. Not all of them, but so many of them. So um, you live in uh, Washington State, near in Seattle, yeah. or outside of Seattle. Now, the man who was the richest man for about 20 years is named Bill Gates. Yeah. And um, what is the likelihood that the two richest men in the world live not only in the same country, not only in the same state, not only in the same city, but in the same neighborhood? I mean, is there something in that neighborhood that we should know about? And are there any, are there any more houses for sale there? After I, after I saw uh, Bill, uh, 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 not, not too long ago, um, I, you know, we were joking about the world's richest man thing, and I, I basically said, thank you know, I said, you're welcome. And he immediately turned to me and said, thank you. Um, but no, M Medina is a great little, uh, it's a suburb of Seattle, and you know, I don't think there's anything special in the water there. And okay. you know, I did locate Amazon in Seattle because of Microsoft. I thought that that big pool of technical talent would provide a good place to recruit talented people from, and that did turn out okay. to be true. So it's not a complete coincidence. There's some correlation there. What propelled you to say, I'm going to start a company selling books over the internet, and I'm going to do it from Seattle? Where did that idea come from? I came across the fact that the web, World Wide Web, was growing at something like 2,300% a year. This is in 1994, and anything growing that fast is, even if its baseline usage today is tiny, it's growing so fast, it's going to be big. And so I looked at that, and I was like, there's got to be, I should come up with a business idea and the, you know, on the internet and then let the internet go around this and we can keep working on it. And so I made a list of products that I might sell online and I started force ranking them. And I picked books because books is super unusual in one respect, which is that there are more book items in the book category than there are items in any other category. There are three million different books active and in print around the world at any given time. So my, my, the founding idea of Amazon was to build universal selection of books. What propelled you to sell things more than books? We started selling music, and then we started selling um, videos. And then I got smart, and I, um, I emailed a, a, a thousand randomly selected customers and asked them, besides the things we sell today, what would you like to see us sell? And that answer came back incredibly long-tailed. The way they answered the question was with whatever they were looking for at that moment. So like, I remember one of the answers was, I wish you sold windshield wiper blades because I really need windshield wiper blades. <laughs> and I thought to myself, we can sell anything this way. So who came up with the idea of Prime? Prime seems to be a great way to get money in advance of people actually getting the services. Yeah. Whose idea actually, was that? Actually, it's very interesting. So like many inventions uh, inside of a team, and I love team inventing is my favorite thing. So I tap dance into the office. I love Amazon. I, I have so much fun there. I love Blue Origin. I love the Washington Post. But Amazon is my full-time job. We're always wondering, what could a loyalty program be? And then, uh, uh, actually, a kind of a junior software engineer came up with this idea, not as a loyalty program, but this idea that we could um, uh, uh, offer people um, 
kind of an all-you-can-eat buffet of fast, free shipping. And when we modeled that, so then, you know, the finance team went and modeled that idea. And the, the results were horrifying. <laughs> that we would offer unlimited shipping. Shipping is expensive. Um, and that we would, and customers love free shipping. But we could see, I mean, again, back to that, you have to use heart and intuition. There has to be risk taking. You have to have instinct. All the good decisions have to be made that way. You do it with a group. You do it with great humility. Because, by the way, getting it wrong isn't that bad. That's the other thing. When, when, when we make mistakes, and we've made doozies like the Fire Phone and many other things that just didn't work out, I can, I could li we don't have enough time for me to list all of our failed experiments. But the big winners pay for thousands of failed experiments. So you try something like Prime, and it um, was very expensive at the beginning. It cost us a lot of money. Because what happens when you offer a free all-you-can-eat buffet? Who shows up to the buffet first? The heavy eaters. It's scary. It's like, oh my god, did I really say as many prawns as you can eat? Oh. And, um, oh. and so that is what happened. But, sur but surely we could see the trend lines. We could see that you know, the different, all kinds of customers were coming, and they appreciated that service. So you've started Blue Origin a little bit in secret, then you made it public. Uh, you're putting a billion dollars or more of your own personal capital into yeah. it every year. Next year, it'll be more for the first time. All right. And um, what are you going to get out of it? Are we going to have people going into space? What is the purpose? Yeah. This, is, um, th this, this is the most important work I'm doing, and I have great conviction about that. It is, um, it's a simple argument. Um, this is the best planet. We have now sent robotic probes to every planet in this solar system. Believe me, this is the good one. And so this gem of a planet, um, we're finally, as a species, big enough to really impact it. So there's all sorts of problems um, that we are about to face because for the first time in our civilizational history, going back thousands of years, we're now big compared to the size of the planet. We can fix that problem, but we can fix it in exactly one way, by, having, uh, by moving out into the solar system. And so I want to um, build space infrastructure so that the next generations of people can use that infrastructure the same way I used UPS and FedEx and so on to build Amazon. Um, and, that, and, and, and so that's what Blue Origin is all about. Right. So do you ultimately want that to be your legacy or Amazon? And what would you like to be, have as your legacy? World's oldest man. Um, that's, a, that's a famous line I like, but, my, but it, it, the, the, the real thing is, I, you know, it'll be whatever it's going to be. I'm going to be proud of the things. I, wanna, I, I live my life in such a way that when I, in a quiet moment of reflection, and I'm thinking back on my life, that I have as few regrets as possible. And I don't, you know, what, what will my legacy be? I have no idea.